Hey, Church from Home family, hope everybody's doing good tonight. I hope you're ready to study the Word of God. I'm not going to keep you long tonight. It is going to be an extremely short uh, Bible study tonight, and I don't even know if you call it a Bible study. I just want to give you some encouragement tonight. I know our lives are busy. Things are happening, sicknesses, disease, surgeries. We're praying for you, Paul Lee. Um, everybody's going through different struggles right now in different circumstances. There's people that are in desperate need of prayer requests, and, 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 and when when life happens and bad things happen and struggles happen, what happens to us as Christians? What normally happens is we become uh, less on fire for God than we used to be. We lose our fire for God. And, and I believe it's time that we need to be encouraged to remain on fire for God if we're not on fire for God, to get back on fire for God, living for him. I think that terminology needs to come back into our vocabulary uh, in the church today, getting on fire for God. We're, we're living in a day of apostates, which simply means people in Christian churches preaching other gospels, other doctrines to get you to heaven. You can just pray a prayer. You can do this and do that. And, and that's not true Christianity. That's not true salvation. So that can get people like me and other pastors and leaders and youth ministers and children's ministers and worship pastors. It can get us discouraged because we're seeing people flock to churches that are apostates, that they're teaching another gospel, that they're teaching Jesus plus something. Uh, and, and that's not what the gospel teaches. That's not what the word of God teaches. So I know it's very easy for us to get uh, to a place of stagnation in our life, to a place that we're lukewarm or even less than lukewarm in our walk with God. And I want every one of you to know that there are four simple things that you can do to remain on fire for God. Life as we know it brings us destructions, it brings us trials, it brings us distractions, it brings us constant busyness. And what happens is we get out of fire with God, get out of step with God. And so there's some things that I want to give you, four simple things, and you're going to be out of here. I read these, uh, I don't know, many years ago, and I wrote them down, and I thought, this is great. I'm going to share this one day. So today I'm sharing it. If you want to remain on fire for God or get on fire for God like you used to be, the first thing you need to do is stick to the basics. No matter how much a veteran of Christian life that you may think that you are in the area of faith and you've grown so much spiritually, no one ever outgrows the basics of God's word and prayer. The Bible tells us in Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. So through the seasons of life and the struggles of life, has your communication with God gone down? Has your study of God's word gone down? I can tell you, if you're not on fire for God like you used to be, that's probably the first step you need to revisit. Stick to the basics. Study God's word pray, talk to him, go to God. The primary way that we communicate with God is through his word and prayer, talking to God, uh, praying to him, listening to him. It shapes who we are. So stick to the basics, prayer and studying the word. Get back to doing it if you haven't done it. If you've never done it, start doing it. It's time to start doing it. The second thing is remain in fellowship. Remain in fellowship with other believers. Uh, a burning coal has got to be stoked. Uh, when when you take a, a burning coal and you, and I'm cooking out on the grill and you put a burning coal, the coals are together. How do you start the fire? You get it together. You let them sit. You let them saturate. You let them soak in. You let them become marinated, if you will, in, in lighter fluid. And then you light the coals and they burn. But if you, they stick together, that fire continues to go. But if you take one coal that was way on fire, and you take it and you put it away from the other coals. Guess what happens? Well, it's going to go cold. It's going to burn out a lot quicker if, than if it was with all the other coals. So we've got to get into a place of fellowship. Some of you use church at home, uh, church from home as your fellowship, and that's wonderful. And we pray that, that it continues to bless you and encourage you in your walk. But those of you that can physically get out and be in a campus, you've got to find a way to get involved in fellowship. Get, a, get involved uh, with people and other Christians, fellowshipping. Let people hold you accountable. You hold 
other people accountable. And when we do that, when we get around a group of people that love God and have pure intentions, we can stay on fire for God. So we've got to remain in fellowship. There's a third way. See, I'm moving fast. I told you it's going to be very, very, very quick tonight. The third thing is remember the joy of your salvation. Psalm 51, 11, and 12 uh, has an emphasis on that. Here's what, cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Uphold me with a willing spirit. So do you remember the first time, the time that you received Christ as Savior? Do you remember that day, that, that time? You don't have to remember the date. You may not even know what day it was, but you remember a time that you gave your life to Jesus and asked him for a relationship do you remember that? If it takes a minute for you to think about it and go, man, I, I remember that day and, and it seems like a million years ago and I wish that I had that joy, then you need to take the time to remember the joy of that salvation. Go back to the time in your mind, in your spirit every day and thank God for the experience of salvation and say, God, I'm thankful for it. I remember it and, and I want that type of joy again. I remember when I gave my life to Jesus and when I did, man, there was a fire that burned, a peace that came into my heart and to my mind and a fire that burned. I wanted to change the world for Christ. I wanted to do everything that I could to just see people come to know Christ and experience the joy that I was experiencing with salvation. We need to do that every day. You and I need to get on fire for God, re revisit that, that salvation experience, and ask God to help you remember that every day, the way that you felt and the security that you had when you prayed to receive Christ. And if you have never prayed to receive Christ as Savior and ask Him to forgive you of your sin and come into your life and repent and turn from your ways and live for the Lord Jesus Christ, it's time for you to do it. Do not hesitate. If you look around you today, you see a society that is struggling and Jesus is getting ready to return. I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm saying it as a matter of fact. Jesus is getting ready to return. And when he does, I want you to be ready. I don't care how long you've been in church. I don't care who your mama is or your daddy is. I don't care who your family is. You're not born into salvation. You're born again unto salvation. It's through Jesus Christ plus nothing, minus nothing. It's Jesus alone that will save you. So if you want to be in heaven when you die, you have to ask Christ to come into your life and forgive you of your sin. Turn from your wicked ways and follow him. That is the way to salvation. Repent and believe. So I said it loud enough. I hope and pray that you get it. Now, the fourth thing that we need to do is go back to our first love. Revelation chapter 2 verse 4 speaks of the first love that, that has been abandoned by so many of us. Our first love is and always will be Jesus. Why? He said, well, I don't love Jesus, but he's still your first love because he first loved you. When, when we, what keeps us focused? What keeps us focused on Jesus? What keeps us focused on the love of God? Fellowship, praying, reading the word, worship, music. Those things keep us focused. So why are we not reading the word? Why are we not worshiping? Why are we not fellowshipping? See, the problem is we want to walk away from that because we don't want to be reminded of the great cost, the great price that it paid, that Jesus had to pay to rescue us from hell. Now people say, well, I didn't want Jesus to rescue me from hell, so I, don't, I, I shouldn't have to be reminded of that. I feel guilted. Well, it's not about guilt. That's called conviction. You didn't ask Jesus to do it. He did it because he loves you and because he created us and he knows what's best for us. Let me tell you something. You take one sec, one millisecond out of this life, you're going to know whether you wanted Jesus to die for you or not. Because there's only two places that you can live the rest of your eternity is either heaven or hell. There's no other place. No, regardless of what any other new age will teach you, and regardless of what anybody else is going to say to you, the word of God is true. The word of God is fact. We've got to go back to our first love. We've got to remember that he first loved us. He loved us first, and now we've got to just show him a response of love. We've got to, we've got to give our lives back over to Jesus to get to where we need to be with him and get on fire and change. You want Listen, I want to get back to the day when, when people were leading, leading other people to Jesus at restaurants, at gas stations, at backyard fences 
businesses. I mean, just hanging out. People were giving their lives to Jesus, but now the the world has waxed cold and Christians are waxing cold with it. Guys, gals, we've got to get on fire for God. We've got, listen, because the day's coming that Jesus is going to step out and he's going to come back. The Bible tells us that no man knows but the Father. Not even the Son knows. The angels don't know, but Jesus, Jesus doesn't even know, but God knows and he's going to send Jesus back to receive us. And I'm telling you, it's coming sooner than you think. Look around you. Look at the world, the things that are happening, the things that are happening in Afghanistan right now. You say, well, what's that got to do with me? I'm telling you, it's got everything to do with you. You just got to watch the end time signs are happening. And I can't wait to talk to you about those Sunday morning. This Sunday morning, we're going to start talking about end times and, and things the return of Jesus. And, and, and so I can't wait for you to experience that with me. I've been studying and I'm excited to share with you, but I'm telling you, it is not without great, uh, without the great fear, which means reverence of the Lord that I'm going to speak to you about that starting Sunday, because I know he's coming back and I know it's going to be very soon. So if you're not on fire for God, I pray to God you will get on fire for him. I pray if you don't know him, that you would come to experience him through salvation today. Would you pray with me? Lord, I love you. I pray for those that are not on fire for you. I pray that you would cause them to, I pray God that you would just put their, their coal back in the, the mix, the fellowship God with, and that they would study the word of God and pray and just seek out revival and a renewed spirit. And those that don't know you, I pray that they would come to know you before it's too late. And God, and I'm afraid that it's getting really close to being too late for those that we love that don't ask you to come into their life and take it serious. And so God, I pray that those people that say they're Christians will do that very thing. People that say they're Christians, I pray God that they'll start to take their walk with you serious because the days are, are evil and you're getting ready to return. I love you, Lord, and I can't Wait to see you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, listen, come be with us starting Sunday morning, 3867 Rainbow Drive. 1030 a.m. is worship service. 930 is Bible study. And hopefully we can start getting some things together for you church at home people uh, to have some different Bible studies and Sunday schools and things like that. So be looking for that on churchfromhome.tv. We love you. Can't wait to see you Sunday morning. Get on fire for Jesus.